Existential sigh. Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Doki Doki Literature Club. This is part four. This game's pretty long, but it's very adorable. I hope you enjoy the format in which I'm playing, even though it's excruciatingly long to narrate all these characters. And also, <laughs> whenever I come back to this game, I forget which voice I gave to each character. So it always sounds kind of different. For a voice actor, that's really infuriating. <laughs> So any of you people who are also very upset by this, I apologize. All right. So last time I was stalking this girl, Yuri. And oh yeah. Yeah, we're going back to that. All right, let's go. You can all put away this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Look at all these cute girls. Look at all these dokies. <sighs> okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. Oh yeah, that's right. I was feeding this girl chocolate last time, I think. Oh, intense dokies. Dokies intensify. Oh, I'll take care of the cups. Y yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. <laughs> we both awkwardly pretend this never happened. Hello, high school. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us, called it. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. <laughs> Who should I show my poem to first? Oh yeah, this is second day of poem. Um, let's, let's go back to our girl. My girl, I guess. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? This one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. <laughs> Even her hands appear sweaty. Knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on her sweater already. Her mom's spaghetti. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I, I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I've given her too many dokies. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Hmm. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah. I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night. Whoa, whoa sorry. Whoa! <laughs> it happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an, an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon is, that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, my urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, 
the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlonian conditioning. I slice the bread. And I feed myself again. Ah, oh, waifu's getting dark. Waifu alert, waifu alert. Getting dark. We're getting into yandere territory already. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. Yeah, you think? I, I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, man. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Uh, Yuri's the Charlie Kaufman of poetry, it appears. It's these sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? But because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I'm a super neat weeb nerd. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities, even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little but now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. <laughs> Writing, listening, sexily feeding me chocolate. <laughs> There really aren't many people like you. Th th that's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you are to thank for that. It's, it's nothing really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. I'm gonna try Sayori, because I always seem to kind of get her, too. Da, 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 da. Woo! I like this one. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> it's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Yeah. Her dumb face stares into the void. <laughs> well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Mmm, I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes I like a bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. 
I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes you have a little rain cloud in your head. A sad poem can give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? <laughs> it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Ooh, a little longer today. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, guys. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. Ugh. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put that bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them down off the shelf one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting and pleading something, but all I hear is the echo, 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 echo inside my head. Wow, that was actually very beautiful. Holy crap. <laughs> Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. And I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good. So you should be proud of it. No, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. Even if it helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing is the best. I'm going to keep writing until I die. Wah. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayuri's always had the habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. Oh, I know people like that. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. That was fun. Let's do Monica, because I hate Natsuki. Hi again. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. <laughs> I'll take that. As long as it's not going to be bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for me today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Shut up, you omniscient. <laughs> I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. 
Who knows what goes on inside that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. Uh, no, of course not. I just meant I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that. <laughs> you must be pretty into her. Eh. <laughs> You, you completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down. I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's really nothing wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying, but anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me, wake me up inside. Wake me up inside. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Title. Save me, the colors they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Scene, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Hmm. Uh, interesting. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote my lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Did she just break the fourth wall? Or when something unexpected may happen. <laughs> Wait, is this tip even about writing? <laughs> what am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Well, okay. Uh, alright. Uh, hmm. Well, I can admit that it's at least better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. What do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's just gonna sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stopped short all of a sudden. D don't tell me. Huh? You're not, you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know, Yuri would love this sort of, this angsty. Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean, I, I mean. <laughs> Looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve. Though what I did is beyond me. I'm so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. Oh, you t we didn't even get to read her poem. <laughs> God, what? I hate Natsuki so much. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do good with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? 
we don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, it's great and all, but that doesn't tell us exactly what we're going to be doing for the event. Ah, uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it yesterday. We're going to be performing. Performing? P -p <laughs> um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us is going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're not... We're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems, too. Sayori's putting, in, putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting up these posters, did you? Uh, well, I did. Did you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys... No, Sayuri. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite their poems out loud. To a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Mm. <laughs> okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Whew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. I feel Yuri on an emotional level. Oh gosh, <laughs> you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, no, no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <laughs> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes her re recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I I'll go next. What? Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clenches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. 
Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's... it's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirlwind fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, and glances around her as she is bewildered, even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone adjoins me afterwards, and then we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds up the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. So Yuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do this so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine that you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> Even Amori liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you very nicely. But it might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, uh, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Amore. It's not like I compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Amore lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I guess I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Ugh, why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem's called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. 
While she st still is a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving a life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. Better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want to for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess it's... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming, though. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick up a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, uh, we'll finish planning for tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. <laughs> then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hee! <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, yeah. How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayuri once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayuri's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayuri. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um... I was thinking about something from earlier. Like, how we get to... Uh, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say one day... Yuri asked to walk home with you? Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> <sighs> Forgive me, Sayori. You're so cute. But I'm so... I'm so into my waifu. I'm... <laughs> Forgive me, <laughs> I'm a terrible person. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I, I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, excuse, excuse, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has n nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. It's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But it's... I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Alright guys, I am going to stop it here, and then we're going to finish our poem next episode. So I hope you had fun today, and I hope you have a wonderful day or evening. I'm Mori. Listen to the Doki 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 tunes. <laughs>